do so. Stuart Bingham, former world champion. Star-studded lineup this evening. Plenty of big names in the house and a full house to enjoy the snooker. And you can Bingham, of course, on Discovery Plus, along with Juan Sejun and Jordan Brown. All three matches there. You can pick and choose, rewind, do what you like, really. But this should be... Joe Sullivan comes in as the underdog, clearly. In fact, prior to this tournament, he hadn't won a match this season. He'd lost all eight that he played. Sean Murphy, after winning the Championship League, perhaps hasn't quite been at his best. And he said to Alan McManus after his match against Fu, he was fully expecting to go out because at one stage on the colours, he looked in all kinds of trouble. He could only tie, in fact, but he got a snooker and he cleared up impressively in a match which was eventful and went to the wire. And for Sean O'Sullivan, well, that was a terrific win in the previous round against that surety from 3-1 behind. He played superbly, so he'll be feeling good. First frame. And a break. It's the man from Stepney Green in East London, Sean O'Sullivan, to get us underway against the magician Sean Murphy. First to four frames, of course, to go through to the round of 16. Things beginning to shape up nicely with the draw. Winner of this to play Chris Wakelin, who earlier got the better of Martin O'Donnell by four frames to one. And it's good evening to Joe Johnson, who I'm sure will be impressed by what he's seen from young Stan, because you know him well, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he could, he, I'm not kidding, he could go all the way to the final. He's such a good player and he, he doesn't get flustered. That's what I like about him. Came to my coaching academy when he was 13, I think it was, and knew then that he was going to be special. So these two have never played before. So it's going to be a little bit strange for both players. I'm sure that Sean knows how well Murphy can play. He's made seven maximums, Sean Murphy. Although, Sean O'Sullivan has made a maximum in the European Masters. Yeah, and that was some break, I can tell you. I mean, any 147 by definition is good, but the way in which he finished it, the final black into this right corner with the rest at the most acute angle, it was a fantastic pot. And then he followed it up with a pressure yellow on his way to clearing up. He didn't win that match. Unfortunately for O'Sullivan, he hasn't quite been able to sink that red and it's unmissable for Murphy. Yeah, he played it with a lot of left-hand side on the cue ball to avoid the reds and that made the pot just that much more difficult. So an easy starter for Sean Murphy. Black's available to the left corner. I like to play these cushion first. Takes you closer to the black. Nothing wrong with the way that he's played it. He knocked in some cracking long balls, Murphy, against Fu. You commentated that match, Joe. It was a bit of a mixture, wasn't it, from the magician? At times he looked brilliant, and then it got a bit edgy and nervy at the end, and it looked like he missed his chance. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, he missed quite a few easy shots. He, he knocked in some beauties, like which you know you expect from Sean Murphy. He's overhit that one, though, by a long way. He's still on the red to the left corner, but he didn't play for this red. He very nearly missed the black, and that's why he's finished up there. Eight. Black, close to its spot as it can do, but it will still go to both pockets. He's had a bit of a mixed history with this tournament. He's made the quarterfinals a couple of times, but he's also lost in the first round on four occasions, so he'd love a deep run this week. And sometimes when you get out of a match that you look like losing, that can be the catalyst for something really special. Well, he's not going to lose in the first round of this tournament, is he? Just coming round to have a look and see if the black goes, which it must do. It's the red that may not go. So if he could finish low on the black, 
you could play a little cannon to the red that's just above the black. So you can see that the red doesn't go. But if he finishes low, he's got half a chance of developing the red. 15. Just got a glimpse there 15. of Sean O'Sullivan sat on his chair, probably thinking that that red should have dropped. And to be fair, it got close enough to drop, but these pockets are not playing big. And now the black freely available into both pockets. This is the red that he missed. And look at all the side he had on the cue ball. But it stayed there on the lip. 24. Sean, Sean will want to stamp his authority on this match, try and win this frame at this visit. Punish the mistake. Thirty-one. Now he could decide to go into the reds here. If he could miss the pink and hit the red on the right of the pink, they should split, split nicely, and he'd be on the red to the right corner, guaranteed. Just like that. Only pushed another one red out though. Not quite far okay. enough to open more reds up, but still got that loose red. choose to go down for the blue to split the pack and we we'll choose the black the blue looks favorite to me and that's more like it in terms of pure aesthetics i don't think there have been very many players in the history of the game who cue more easily on the eye than murphy Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, oh, so unfortunate. It's an occupational hazard with that 46. shot, isn't it? But no less unlucky. Well, the white nearly went in, but the red certainly did. So, what a chance for Sean. The white very nearly cannoned into that red, which, of course, would have prevented the red going in. But here's a chance that... Sean O'Sullivan didn't expect, and he made the point to Allen ahead of this match that when you're playing a player of Murphy's calibre, to have any chance, you've got to nick the odd frame you thought you'd lose, and Murphy was well on his way there before the unlucky red going in with the blue. So this is just that kind of frame that if he could win, could have a big bearing on the outcome. Nine. He comes into this match off the back of that excellent performance against Zach Surety. It was looking a bit grim at 3-1 down, but he made a century and then a one visit in the decider. And that's got to give you a lot of confidence. He also said that he loves the big occasion. He was really looking forward to this tonight. Loves the big crowd. Opportunity to showcase what he can do. He's got a couple of awkward reds. He's just trying to figure out how to attack those two reds that's nearest the cushion. He could play for the pink, but he may be slightly hampered if he does. Well, the well the wrong side of the blue. Not just a little, but a long way shot. But you should be able to get in and out of Bork here.
touch of left hand side on the cue ball. He doesn't want to finish it behind this red. And he can just about see the red to the right corner. Yeah, the season couldn't have started worse, really, for O'Sullivan. Played in the Championship League. Not only did he lose all three matches, he lost all nine frames that he played. Perhaps the most hurtful loss is qualifier for the upcoming international championship where he led Jordan Brown, conqueror this week of Neil Robertson, of course. 5-2 and lost 26. the last four frames, but he's found something in this tournament. <laughs> Beat Andrew Higginson. And then that victory over surety from 3-1 down. And he couldn't have fled that one any better. That's just where he wants to be. Now he could leave the cue ball dead on the cushion. He'd be on the red. Near is the left corner. Or he could try to bring the reds into play. Chose to bring them into play. And that's okay. It's okay. Just looking to see if the black spot is held or not. If he drops this red in. I think the black spot is held. So if he just drops this red into the corner, plays the black, the black would go on the pink spot. But this black isn't a gimme by any means. But if it does go in, he's going to be on the red. Oh, just caught that near angle. And that should cost him the frame. Always looks as though it was heading to the jaw. Well, that's a big early moment in this match because O'Sullivan was looking good to steal there, and that would have hurt Murphy given the circumstances in which he broke down earlier in the frame. But not to be. Yeah, those are the kind of shots that you've got to get, Philip. You know, it's a tough shot. This is where he knocked the red in. Four. Cue ball was close. Had he caught them full in the face, obviously, things would have been different. But now Six. it looks like a formality. Just needs the green and the brown. Fine. Yeah, and this is going to hurt Sean and Sullivan. He knows that these should have been his had he potted the black. Eighteen. So an eventful opening frame. Murphy potting the blue, but potting the red as well, which looked like it might be costly, but Sullivan missed the black. Uh, Murphy is cleared to the pink. So that bit of misfortune proved to be academic. And the favourite has got the first frame on the board. Sean Murphy leading by frame to nil. Sean Murphy, Sean Murphy even, off the mark first this evening. Second frame. But Sean O'Sullivan had a good chance. Missed the black after Murphy had knocked in a red with the blue, so... 
It's Murphy who leads 1-0. Four remains the target. A place in the round of 16 up for grabs and a meeting with the shootout champion, Chris Wakelin. He beat Martin O'Donnell earlier 4-1. It's been a good day for the youngsters. Xing Zi Hao seeing off Andres Petrov, who, of course, had upset Mark Allen, our defending champion, in that extraordinary match that lasted the best part of four hours, but beaten today by Jing of China, 4-1. Aaron Hill coming through against Dylan Emery by whitewash after he made the Wuhan quarterfinals a couple of weeks back. And of course that terrific victory for Stan Moody over the reigning Scottish Open champion Gary Wilson. What a scalp to claim in your debut professional season. And he now plays the winner of the match tonight between Juan Sejun and Jordan Brown. They're on table three. Well, deciding to open up the reds, coming off the reds thick instead of the normal way of spinning off the reds, catching them thin with a little bit of side. Trying to put pressure on his young opponent or younger but he did leave a shot to nothing but unfortunately he's not on the colour so just a little roll up Behind the colour, I would think. Deserve more. Good pot. Well, Sullivan's looking to match his best ever performance in a ranking event. 16, which he achieved at the Scottish Open. That was back in 2016. First year of the home nations. This is the eighth year. And this isn't easy. He'd like to land up to the red, to the right of the black, or those three reds by the black. But it's difficult to get to those. Not impossible, because he's looking at coming in and out of balk first. And that could be a way. This is the way. Around four cushions, try and land up to the red, to the right of the black. It's tough. Yeah, and the danger there is that he was leaving the two reds to the left middle. And I'm pretty sure he's left one of them. Like he's left the easier one of the two as well. One. Sullivan got back on the tour last season via the Q Tour rankings after a three year absence. So this is his second season back, and with that in mind, of course, he'll have one eye on the cutoff again come the end of this season. There's still a lot of snooker to play, but he arrives here at 89 in the world, so. Having got a couple of wins under his belt, that's a big boost for him in his bid to get himself up those rankings. Yeah, it's amazing what a couple of wins does for your confidence. Six. He'd like to get top side of the blue here and play a cannon to the pink, maybe. Bring pink into play. 
that's an option. Seven. And he's left it straight again, or straightish. And a slight angle. to free the pink well he okay. has freed it but he can't pot it to the but it's now free to the corner so he's going to get a good safety shot here he's opened the table up with that last shot meanwhile Stuart Bingham who's getting used to his new spectacles he's taken the opening frame against Ricky Walden although Walden is well placed to Hit back to level. He's on a break of 59 in the second frame. That's on table two. Three. Jordan Brown has the first frame against Juan Sejun. Channel Sullivan, 13. And that's a pretty good safety from Sean O'Sullivan. That's one of the secrets of the game, isn't it, Joe? When you have the disappointment of losing position, to not let that impact your safety. Well, it was a pretty good safety, but so was that from Sean Murphy. And although he's left the red on to the right corner, it's full of danger if he does take that on. Don't blame him for refusing the pot. Problem with playing that shot, that containing safety shot, is that more than not, you're in trouble the next shot. I think dead on the, in the green spot is pretty good there. That's just what he's played. Hasn't quite got that cue ball close enough to the cushion, though. And this may be a chance here. Red to the left corner. I think on that type of shot, then, you know, you've got to make sure of that red going towards the cushion. But it could have worked to his advantage, leaving the red on and Sean O'Sullivan missing it. Got a chance here now. Murphy. a pretty spectacular return to form for Sean Murphy last season because the season before he was struggling Seven. he was low on confidence seemed to have lost his way a little but he really did return to his very best two of the tournaments that he won Eight. this year the players championship and the tour championship he hadn't even qualified for the year before the 
preserve of the best players on the one-year list as regards the 16 in the case of the players and the top eight in case of the Tour Championship. And, of course, he was also runner-up in the Welsh Open to Rob Milkins. The only disappointment for Murphy was a first-round exit at the Crucible to see Jai Wee, but frame loss was uh, put into context by what C did thereafter, making the semis and very nearly the final. That's not great, 15. though, positionally. No, he wanted to slide past those two reds, but if this blue goes in, I feel sure he will take it on. Right in the middle. And didn't just pot it, played position off of it as well. And he's nicely on two reds. Sean took that long red on, didn't he? And he might pay the price. The three reds just above the black, they all go taken in sequence. So if he plays for the red to the right corner this time round, he's coming round to have a look. That frees the red to the left corner, which frees the red to the right corner. Seven. Yeah, fourteen points in the game. Still needs quite a few reds yet. That seems to be queuing well. Struck that blue to the left corner, the yellow pocket, beautifully. 34. He mentioned on Discovery Plus that he might be switching cues this evening, as we know he's had a couple of extra ones made because he believes that different conditions can 35. require different equipment. And he made the point to Alan that with the cloth a bit more worn now, as we're into day four, maybe. A switch might be required, so we'll keep our eye on that. But he seems to be queuing pretty well at the moment with this one. Well, that was a gorgeous shot, wasn't it? Cannon into the reds, catching the reds just as he wanted. He's developed them all in that shot. Doesn't need to play for the black. The two reds by the black spot will both go to this same pocket. 42. And nicely on the pink to get to them. Thirty-four points, the difference. Forty-nine. Another red in the colour. And he's safe. Sean O'Sullivan went for a long red into the left corner, hit it too thick. 56. And this is the result. Mr. Black in the first frame, which cost him. 57. Yeah, he went for the red full-blooded, didn't he? He left a red to the right middle. If he plays it harder, takes the cue ball back towards the bark area, then he doesn't leave the easy red for Sean Murphy. He put himself under a lot of pressure. This is the red I'm talking about. He's tried to hold for the pink to the right middle, which he did. But if he plays it harder and gets out of danger in case he misses, he can still win the frame from the blue and, and the bark colours. A 
Coach Sean Murphy seems to be queuing very well this evening. Well, you could say Murphy's playing with the house money this week now, having come so close to defeat against Marco Fu, winning on the final black. He said himself he couldn't believe he was still in the tournament. 73. Maybe at the end of this week, he'll be looking back on that moment while he's busy lifting the Alex Higgins trophy. He certainly seems to be queuing very nicely. Well, he's potted 42 balls out of 42. 100% okay. pot success. And surely <coughs> he won't be penalised for missing the green if he does miss it. 100% in live pay, play. Well, Neil Folds has made the point, and I think it's a valid one, that maybe we could have a stat which only refers to balls in live play because that's the real measure, isn't it, of your success in terms of your pot success. It doesn't really matter if you miss one at the end of a frame when it's one. That green being an obvious example. So an excellent break from Sean Murphy of 80 to punish Sean O'Sullivan's miss long red. He doubles his lead. He's looking good. He's 2-0 to the good. Sean O'Sullivan has had chances in the first two frames, but he's been break. punished heavily for the mistakes he's made. He missed a black at the back end of the first. And Sean Murphy cleared up to the pink. And in the second frame, went for a long red, hit it too thick. Murphy stepped in with 80. So 2-0 to the former Welsh Open champion, the only Home Nations event that Murphy has won to date. Mind you, he won it in pretty spectacular fashion, it must be said. Big Kyron Wilson 9-1. And it was a special moment for him because the great Ray Reardon presented him with the Ray Reardon trophy. There's nothing that Murphy is still to win in the game that really matters, of course. World, UK, Masters and Champion of Champions winner. And now up to 10th place in the all-time list of ranking event champions with a tally of 12. I think it's pretty obvious that he's hungry for more. And he talked to Alan ahead of this match about how he's not lost any of that hunger to compete and the buzz that he gets in front of a big crowd. By his own admission, he's something of a show-off, Murphy. He loves to entertain, and the bigger the occasion, the better he likes it. Well, that's why he's a professional snooker player, to entertain people, win money, of course, and titles, but to entertain. If the public don't like it, they won't pay to watch it. That's a great opening red. And he's nicely on the black. What a brilliant shot that was from Sean O'Sullivan. Very brave because he was leaving the game. He missed it. touching and this is a good red to get rid of because the black would then go into this left corner not sure if it will go to the right corner nine he says he likes the big stage well this is a great chance to show us how much he likes it. Well, as you say, it was a gutsy red after losing the first two frames, which he might have won. Yeah, he could very easily have won the first frame, missed the black into that right corner. It wasn't a simple black by any means, but well, the black, I'm not sure if it will go to the left corner, but the pink, Looks to be tied up. I 
I say looks to be tied up because it might go to this yeah. left corner pocket once 15. he removes this red. Alex Chrisat is our referee this evening. Nicely held round for the black. Would have liked to have been low on the black just to give that red above it a little nudge. black so he can give that red a little nudge down the red that's nearest the left corner I thought he would have played that with a little bit of screw just to leave the cue ball where the black is and nudge the other Are red one? Ricky Walden made a century in the second frame on table two against Stuart Bingham so it's one all and Walden is 43 in front in frame three. One each as well between Juan Sejun and Jordan Brown. Juan making a century. He's been scoring very heavily this week. Uh, looking at a possible plant to the middle, but it looked like it had to be made. to the top angle as you can see yeah and they haven't been dropping off that top angle this week have they countless times we've seen the ball stay out or do a little trip around the lip of the pocket before remaining above ground into that right center in particular Extended spider. You only use this in extremely difficult circumstances. It's a horrible instrument. Looking for a kiss on that red, and that's end of break. 32. Should have made more than 32 there. The reds were beautifully placed. He was attempting to play a full ball cannon to that red, but missed it entirely. Hasn't left anything, but he has left an easier safety shot than it should have been. Now, that shot being harder and the right path to put his opponent in trouble. That's an excellent pot. He needs a good kiss. Well, 
on. Got the case, but wasn't a good one. Excellent pot, though. Come on. Oh, goodness. Changed my mind, I think he said. He barely hit it in the end. Those are never easy shots. I think Mark Williams Number might be four. the best of all time at playing them, but trying to just nestle up to the ball colour there with that amount of distance between them. Not easy. But this went horribly wrong. Yeah, hasn't left a few uh, a free ball though, so Sean Murphy electing to put in him in a game. Well, that was clever. Double kiss back down the table, appreciated by Sean Murphy. We've all done it, Sean. Left it short. I don't think I've ever left it that short, but <laughs> we've all left it short. Oh, what about that? In off the pink. That was a fluke. I think we'll see this again in a moment, but it did hit the pink. Fully expected to pot it, though, looking where the cue ball is. Come on. Well, he's only missed one ball, Murphy, and as we know, it was an irrelevance at the end of the oh, previous yeah. frame, the green, after he'd made 80. Yeah, so still got 100% pot success in live play. Back to being reliable with the rest. And they're tough shots, I can tell you. Six. Safe to success. Just behind on that one. He's under hit it slightly. Eight. Cannon hasn't worked out as well as he anticipated. He sent the pink towards the pocket, but he's got the cover. Yeah, he's 20 points behind, so he didn't want to hit that harder and push the green safe. Certainly relief for O'Sullivan that that didn't work out positionally for Murphy. It's very hard to imagine him coming back from 3-0 behind, so this frame feels like a must for him. already had a good chance that he could only make 32 from. He's managed to cover the red though, which is all important. Had he been able to see that red and he can nearly see enough of it, could have been end of frame. And it might still be <laughs> terrific pot. Well, even against Marco Fu, when he struggled towards the end of the match before turning it around, one thing that was very eye-catching throughout that match was the quality of his long potting, and it's been 
Come on display on. again this evening. And yes, it's only one point, but it gives him control of the Come table. On. Yeah, and don't forget, he's got to escape from this nuke and not leave anything. So, although he's 19 points behind Sean Murphy, at this moment in time, his favourite. This is a great attempt, a great attempt. Terrific shot. He's just landed up to it. What a shot that was. He won't play a better one than that. work out. He doesn't need that red, that Murphy's push safe. That was a poor safety from Sean Murphy. Not sure where he was playing to put the cue ball. Even if he got the cue ball to the left side cushion, he could still see the red. So another chance for Sean O'Sullivan. Like to have been straight on it. Eight. Now, doesn't want to cannon that red near the left side cushion if he plays around the two cushions for the reds. Decided to play for them to the middle. Could have done without the kiss on the pink. 13. 32 the lead. Still 51 on the table. Now 43 on the table, but no position. No, but a chance to put another colour safe, maybe the pink, blue. Give himself some insurance. I think he'd have preferred the blue, because the pink on the right side cushion there is going to be potable for a right-handed player. Solomon 14. Bits and bobs, really, for Sean O'Sullivan at the moment. No real scoring of any significance. His highest break, just 33. He's had a couple of chances in this frame. Yes, he's got a lead. But will it be enough?
very risky to take this long straight red on to the left corner. Doesn't have to take it on. Yeah, I didn't feel that he had to take that red on. He could have played the other red and played that red towards the red and black and waited. Better hope this black doesn't drop in. This is certainly a tester for Sean Murphy, but if he can get it, he's right back in the frame. harder just a touch harder and this red would would have been a, a lot easier to the right corner as it is he doesn't need a color now so he could play for any of the small colors great shot great shot he's a little too hard Oh, not hard enough. Well, it could bring the pink into play. Pink. Pink more. And that's not going to be far away. Nine. Clever play that from Sean Murphy. Just one shot in this now. The score is irrelevant. Sean O'Sullivan is 24 points in front, but it means nothing. If he leaves the yellow on, it could be end of frame. He struck it well, I'd be delighted with that. Two one now to one Sejourn against Jordan Brown on table three. could send the yellow down towards the green. It wouldn't go past the green and it gets a free go at the snooker. Something like that. Great shot again from Murphy. Played it with a lot of left hand side to check the cue ball in behind the black and what a good shot it was. This will take some hitting. He might not hit this at all. There's no doubt that Murphy's tactical game has improved significantly in recent seasons. He spent a lot of time practicing with Fergal O'Brien in Dublin on the tactical side of the game. That's a good effort. Oh, no, miss. Better be going Somewhere back. Before. Ricky Walden is now 2-1 up on Stuart Bingham, having lost the opening frame, made a century in the second and has dominated the third. Those matches on tables two and three, of course, are on Discovery Plus. 20 between them now, take two. Yeah, he's got to be careful about hitting it any oh, harder nice. because he doesn't want to leave the yellow on. Judging the side coming off the second cushion. That's what's letting him down. 
not quite so high this time. Much better. That's better. We didn't want it to rub it. Hold on, miss. Show my four. So he's missed it both sides. Well, as Joe has said, the penalty points in some ways immaterial. It's about not leaving the yellow, isn't it, with the position of the balls? That's the, the all important part of the shot, isn't it, Philip? You can miss this another five times, but as long as he doesn't leave it. And he, he's got a lot closer. Well, that's OK. Didn't want to hit it any thinner, that's for sure. No. He can get behind the brown or green here. It's the brown, and it's good. Being close to the cushion makes it a little bit easier to hit. But he's got the same problem. Mustn't leave it. He'd like to get in behind the yellow, send the yellow down the table, leave the cue ball where the yellow is, but tough shot to play. Yeah, just didn't get in behind it enough, did he? And this yellow is on to the middle. Fear the worst for Sean O'Sullivan. Sean Murphy has been turning the screw in this tactical exchange on the colours, but Sean O'Sullivan had a couple of decent chances prior to that and just couldn't make enough from them. And now the frame in the hands of Murphy. just needs to leave himself a nice angle on the brown to get to the blue and he's going to find himself 3-0 down Five. just needs the pink taking extra care he knows this is going to hurt nine He's had chances, sorry, Philip. No, he's looking a little resigned there, isn't he? He'll look back on the black in the first okay. frame. That was a big moment after Murphy had knocked in the blue and a red to give him the chance to steal. Second frame, Mr. Long Red. Murphy punished him. And Sean Murphy has punished Sean O'Sullivan again for not making the most of the opportunities he's had. Perhaps the 3-0 scoreline doesn't tell the entire story, but Murphy in clinical mood here as he moves 3-0 up. Sean Murphy is looking good for the round of 16 right now. Sean O'Sullivan has had his Thank moments, and he certainly had a few chances, Sean but he has been punished severely for failing to take them. And Murphy now three up with four to play in their first meeting. Winner to face Chris Wakelin for a place in the quarterfinals. Murphy, who's been a quarterfinalist in this event a couple of times before. Sullivan looking to match his best ever ranking run at the Scottish Open in 2016 when he made the round of 16. Yeah, so the point of no return. Sean O'Sullivan. Safe to success is favouring O'Sullivan. But it's the scoring, isn't it? Well, Murphy's still not missed a ball in line play, is he? He's only missed the green when he was on 80. Yeah, so we're still going to give him 100%, aren't we? Fifty-seven out of fifty-eight.
Well, if you can get the cue ball over to the right side of the table, that creates a few more problems for Sean O'Sullivan. Dead on the cushion behind the brown. Be nice. Um, brilliant shot. Brilliant shot from Sean O'Sullivan. Well, he's got some bottles to go for those. There's been nothing wrong with his long potting tonight. That's five out of seven. It's been his scoring that's been missing. His highest break, just 33. And that's another good one. Made a century in his previous match against Zach Shorty and then a winning one visit in the decider. Mentioned his 147 against Barry Hawkins earlier this season. He nearly made one in World Championship qualifying at the end of last season. He was playing David Grace and he actually knocked in two Nine. reds at once, which ended his hopes of doing it. He had to settle for 140. So he's more than capable of heavyweight scoring, but it's got to start now. Point of no return. Well, to be fair, Philip, he's got to feel good after knocking that red in. The opening red that he potted to the left corner. Oh. I thought he played for the red behind the pink there because he's a little short playing on these reds. This is a red that he knocked in to start off with and never touched the sides. Brilliant shot. Okay. He needs some wins. He's standing at 89 in the world. So he's got to get in the top 64. This would be a good chance to start doing that. Aggressive shot there, but didn't quite catch them full enough. Still on the red. Okay. Yep, nicely done. Good recover. Back in prime position. 21. He's moved up three spots in the live list as regards the rankings by earning the four and a half thousand points that he's accrued thus far here. Well, he's going in the right direction then, isn't 28. he? I do like his game and I like his mental attitude. Going for that long red. Speaks volumes for, to me. 29. 36. And that equals his highest break so far. Well, it was a great red once again to get in. But can he now make it really count with something telling? That's what's been lacking thus far this evening. 
He's just dropped awkward there. He's banged straight on the black, so it's going to be difficult to get to the next red. Doesn't really want to play for the red that's on the cushion. So he's got to be very with his positional play here. And that wasn't a bad shot if the red He's played that superbly. Yeah, it looks like it goes from here, doesn't it? But he's right behind the shot. He doesn't think it goes. That's why he's taking the more difficult red with the rest. I think the cameraman thinks it goes. Another good recovery. But these reds, like I say, are all covering themselves, all covering one another. So he needs some kind of a, a touch here on the reds, unless he plays for the red along the cushion. And he knows that this pockets on this table are tight, but I don't think he's got any option here but to play for it. where you've got to make sure of 52. the pot rather than the position. Nicely done. 53. And now he's got the angle to play the cannon to that red just below the pink. He'd be on the red to the right corner then. Gentle cannon. To be honest, I'm not sure what he played there. But if 16. the red goes to the left middle, and it doesn't. It looked a big target to it, the red below the pink. Good break, but not yet a frame winning one. Plenty of red still there for Murphy. Well, it doesn't matter how high the cameraman goes there, it still doesn't go that red. He'd love it to go. That would have been end of frame for sure. As it is, you now Murphy, every chance of still winning this frame. All the balls are there for the taking. I think I would have tried to have pushed a red safe there. Colonel Sully 160. Yeah, it was a good break, launched by an excellent long red, but. He'll be irritated that he couldn't quite convert it into a frame-winning one. Well, I see what I mean. He knocks a long one in. One. And who knows? Sean O'Sullivan now has to sit and hope that Murphy doesn't clear the table here. They all go, taken in the right order. It's amazing, Murphy has still only missed one ball of no consequence. Three out of three from distance, that was another cracker. Well, I'm going to say he hasn't missed a ball. Four. Surely they don't count when the game's over. Five. The three reds that are closest together. The top one of those if you can take that one at some stage, it opens the door for the other two to the right corner. Would certainly be a very satisfying way to round off a great evening for Sean Murphy if he could clear up here. John Higgins style, 60 behind. Well, he's only 48 behind now, which doesn't sound as bad, does it?
protein. So could play for that red that I talked about into the right middle. Just making sure, taking his time. <coughs> yeah, dangerous times okay. these now for Sean and Sullivan. Struck very confidently, wasn't it? Such a confident player, John Murphy. Great to watch. Well, this is the kind of queuing we saw last season so often. Well, it doesn't get any better than this, does it, Philip? To be fair, 100% pot success in live play. 27. But he's got a difficult red to, to come further down the line. Yes, it's been perfect from Murphy in that regard, and yet Sean O'Sullivan has had some chances, hasn't he? He just hasn't been able to quite convert them as he'd like. So now just 26 points behind. 34. And you, there's a case to say that Murphy's favourite now. I think I'd rather be 26 behind and in amongst the balls, even though there is one difficult one. Left a nice angle on the black to stun in behind this red. 35. I'm not sure how often a player has won a match without missing a ball in live play. It must be extremely rare if it's been done before, but Murphy has that opportunity here. Let's clinch the match. Yeah, he's just overhit that one. I'd have liked to have been straight behind this red, screwed back for the blue. <coughs> but if it goes in, he's going to bounce off the cushion. Enters the game, just overhit it. As I say, if it goes in this red, then he's going to be nicely on the black. Well, he says he's the best in the world with the rest. And I don't disagree with him. He's right up there, for sure. And Sean fearing the worst now, I'm sure. Sean and Sullivan, that is. Yeah, one good shot from black to yellow here. And Murphy has this frame and match at his mercy. Doesn't want the kiss. Perfectly played. 50. Well, they call him the magician, and well, he's certainly magic this frame. If he does go on to win it, he looks cool, calm, and collected out there. He's not rushing around the table, just a nice, steady pace. 55. If I were him, I'd burn the other two cues and keep that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'll be changing this one anytime soon, the way he's been queuing tonight. Absolutely ruthless snooker from Sean Murphy. And just the pink needed. Sixty-four. This ball for a truly immaculate performance. Incredible. Incredible from Sean Murphy. That was sheer magic. He didn't miss a single ball in live play. 76 out of 76 when it mattered. It literally does not get any better than that. Sean Murphy into round four in some style. By four frames to nil, he'll play Chris Wakelin for a place in the last eight. Well, that was some display, wasn't it, by Sean Murphy. 
absolutely magnificent. How do you improve upon perfection? That's what he's got to try and do in the next round, but he will be highly delighted to be through.